Hello, this is Bob Schroyer of Nancy Zitnax. On this podcast, we're going to diagnose what is wrong with your motorized power base. You may have experienced cases in which the uh, power base seems to be running slowly or it's slipping, and you can't quite figure out what the problem is. So we'll walk through a variety of uh, causes here and try to help you diagnose what the problem is. The first cause, uh, more than likely, is due to a stretched belt. These are the O-rings that run between the power base and the ball winder. Uh, they could either be black, orange, or clear. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment. But basically, the first place you should look would be a stretch belt. And uh, the way to determine that is you remove the belt, the existing belt, lay it up flat on the table, take a new belt, hopefully you have a new belt there that you can compare this to, and lay the new belt on top of it. And instantaneously you're going to see that the old belt is bigger than the new belt, which indicates that the old belt is probably stretched. So the first thing you should do is do that test, put the new belt on, see if that solves your problem. Keep in mind now that the orange and black belts are 3 16 of an inch in diameter. They are used with uh, the older series of motors. These are uh, what we refer to as the R51 and R27 motors. Uh, these motors were typically shipped up until oh, roughly 2010, maybe into 2011. But in general, uh, these are older units, so they may be experiencing other problems, which we'll talk about in a moment. But nonetheless, uh, you can look at the stretch belt as being probably the number one cause. Be sure that uh, you consider ordering some new belts if you do use the second uh, belt that came with the unit, because now you're going to be out of belts going forward. But chances are, even if you have to use a second belt, you're going to have other issues uh affecting the motor life for example and some other things so but do keep in mind that you probably should think about ordering some more belts and you can order them directly from Nancy's Nitnex. The second cause and, and usually equally as uh, problematic as the first cause of the stretch belts is a dirty ball winder. The ball winder is 99.8 percent of the problem in, uh, in, in these cases other than the fact that the motor can wear out or the belts can stretch the more likely culprit is that the ball winder's gear system has gotten uh, full of fiber, and the fiber enters through the opening in the top of the ball winder, gets into the gear systems, and over the years and over the millions of yards of yarn that you're going to wind, uh, fiber will pack into the gear teeth and cause the uh, unit to slow down. Uh, it, it's almost impossible for the motor to turn the uh, ball winder if it's packed full of fiber in the gear teeth. So we now recommend that uh, users at home should clean their units out every three years, let's say. Uh, yarn shops should clean their yarn, their ball winder rather, uh, out every six to 12 months. Sometimes it may be more frequent, uh, but you'll be shocked and surprised when you go inside the ball winder and see how much fiber has actually gotten in there. And uh, But the good news is once you get it out of there, it gives new life to your ball winder and, uh, and your motor and your belts. We will not go through on this podcast the details of how do you clean that out, but that's something that you can listen to another podcast, and I'll go into some detail on that. We also have a video on our website under spares and repairs, and that deals with cleaning the ball winder out. It has photos, has written instructions. Uh, it's really where you should go if you need to, if you need to check uh, how to clean out the ball winder. Okay, let's assume you've checked the ball winder and it uh, wasn't dirty, or you were able to clean it out. Um, and you're still having problems with the, the power base slipping. Uh, so a third item could be the O-ring on the ball winder is pressing too tightly against the shaft that protrudes up through the center of the ball winder. That's the pointy shaft. A uh, quick test there is uh, you can grab the spindle in your hand, on your right hand, let's say, and grab the spindle arm. That's the wooden arm with the logo on it. Grab that with your left hand and try to twist while you're holding the arm stationary. Try to twist the spindle. It should be, you know, easy to turn, so to speak. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard, but it shouldn't be super easy either. Um, if it's really hard to turn, uh, it could be that that's pressing too tightly against the shaft. Uh, that pressing against the shaft is putting a tremendous drag on the motor system. And um, that's something you want to relieve. The, the looser you make that, uh, while still having it in contact, which, which is critical, but the looser you make it, the easier it is on the motor and the belts. 
We have a uh, video on YouTube under O-ring adjustment. If you type in O-ring adjustment on uh, YouTube, you should see one of our videos pop up there. Usually number one, but it could be number two or so. And that will step you through the process of adjusting the tension on that O-ring. Another common cause for the unit to be slowing down is uh, the swift is too tight. What do we mean by that? Well, on an umbrella swift, if you jam in the nut or you jam that uh, wooden nut that you that you tighten after you've uh, put the skein on the, on the swift, if you jam it up there too tight and you make the yarn really tight on the uh, swift itself, uh, it's really hard for the ball winder to pull it off. So back it off an inch or so after you, after you raise it up there. Don't make it super tight. Uh, also, don't have your yarn pulling from the bottom of the skein. I mean, uh, trying to pull it from the bottom when it's all twisted up and, you know, it can't get out of there. It, it, it has great difficulty getting released from the skein. So start to pull the yarn from the top of the skein as much as possible. Make it easier on the ball winder to do its job because every time you have a tight uh, skein up there, as the uh, as the ball winder pulls the yarn off, if it sees a, a, a point where it has to really pull it hard, it's going to tighten the ball up, and it's not going to look good when you when you look at your finished ball. So you want to make it easy on the ball winder uh, and try to minimize the stress that the yarn experiences as it gets released from the swift. Okay, now one of the things you probably thought is happening is the motor could be wearing out. Well, the motor is rated for upwards of 2,000 hours. That's operating hours, not power on hours. Power on hours is when you come in in the morning and if you're a yarn shop owner and you throw the switch on, uh, it's not running, but it's powered up. Well, that's not uh, operating hours. That's power on hours. Those are not affected by uh, the amount of hours that it's on. What does affect the uh, the lifetime of the motor, however, is running it, you know, operating it. Uh, so it has upwards of 2,000 hours. I say upwards because every situation is different. The motors are, you know, they're mass produced, so there's going to be some variation in the motor quality. But in any event, you're going to see a lifetime upwards of 2,000 hours. At that point, the brushes on the motor start to wear out, and it loses power. As it loses uh, power due to the brush wear, it won't have the torque. And it'll seem to spin, and you'll hear the motor running, but it's not really doing much. But that's why it's critical that you check those other items out first, because you could be misdiagnosing the problem as being a motor wear-out situation, when in fact... It has nothing to do with the motor wear out. It has to do with those other items. So you really need to go through that process of stretch belts, dirty ball winder gears, checking those, uh, O-ring too tight on the ball winder, swift is causing the problem, being the arm being too tight on that, before you go to the motor or wear out uh, uh, theory. You should do a quick calculation in your head or on paper that says, okay, I got this ball winder in such and such a year. I've run it uh, X number of months. On the average, I run it X number of hours during a month. Therefore, you know, this is where I think I am in that 2,000-hour uh, cycle. There is no easy measurement that we can do that tells you, uh, you know, where you're at. So you pretty much have to calculate that yourself, and you have to figure you've done all those other uh, maintenance tasks before you conclude that the motor needs to be replaced because the motor is going to cost you some money. So it should be the last thing that you do. On the other hand, if you're a business and you, your, your livelihood depends on this uh, power brace running each and every day, you should probably have a spare motor on hand at around the 1,000-hour point. You know, we sell the spare motors uh, to you. You put them in. It takes a short period of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, magically your ball winder becomes brandy new again. So um, it's just the way things are. It's like a new set of brake pads on your car. You know, the whole reason you had to get those brake pads is the old ones wore out. And once you put the new ones on, you know, the car stops properly again. Well, the same thing with the motor being replaced on the power base. It's, it's giving it new life. And assuming you've cleaned out the ball winder, which it once again is one of the critical maintenance functions you have to do over time, uh, everything should run uh, like a champ with no problems. On a separate podcast, we'll talk about replacing the motor. Uh, we'll also talk about cleaning the ball winder out. Uh, those two things deserve their own podcast to go through in some detail. So uh, hopefully this answers your basic uh, immediate question of what you should be doing to check to see what's causing their problem. Uh, but if uh, you're still stumped, then try to look at those other podcasts pertaining to cleaning the ball winder out and also replacing the motor. Thanks.